All right, so uh, because in this class we're going to be summing forces so much, we have to be able to sum forces, and forces are vectors. We have to be able to sum, and right now I'll talk about two-dimensional vectors. I think and hope that this is easy, easy, easy for you, um, but let's, let not, let's not leave anybody behind. Uh, so let's talk about the method of components, which is the method that I use for uh, breaking vectors into their components, adding their components, and then, you know, combining them back at the end if necessary. This is also called, also known as a Cartesian scalar notation. Cartesian scalar notation. So if I say write something in the Cartesian form, uh, it's just x, y, or i, j form. So vectors here can be written in, in the form. So let's say we have a vector r. Uh, so maybe it has a 16 in the i component, 24 in the j component. Uh, maybe this is a force, so I like to have my units out here in parentheses, um, and you need units, right? Uh, so our vector can be written as 16 plus 24. So that would be this, this right here, this R, if I would go, you know, over 16 in the I and up 24, I probably should have drawn that a little bit um, past 45 degrees, but up 24 in the J, right? What are these I's and J's? Are you comfortable with I's and J's and K's if we're in 3D? But th those are unit vectors, and unit vectors tell the direction Right, unit vectors tell the direction they have a magnitude of 1 and they are unitless. Unit vectors tell the direction they have a magnitude of 1. So I is a unit vector in the x direction. J is a unit vector in the j direction. But anyway, they just tell the direction of this component right there. 16 in the i, 24 in the j would look like a vector right here. 16 in the i, 24 in the j. Okay, so let's, uh, if we don't already have them in component form, right, we need to break them into component form. So how can we take, let's say we know the magnitude and we want to break it up into its x and y, or break it up into its i and j. How can we do that if we know the magnitude and we know the angle? Uh, well, just from trig, you know that this side of the triangle would be f cosine theta, this side of the triangle f sine theta, right? Right, so uh, we can break, we can do this one of two ways. We can say that this f is f cosine theta in the i and f sine theta in the j. Or I kind of like to break them up separately and just kind of say, okay, my fx component is f cosine theta. My fy component is f sine theta, right? So we're going to go through these and I'll show you that you know we can write them as i's and j's, or we can just separate x from y. I, I kind of like to just kind of separate x from y. Okay, and you know that right this triangle. You know that cosine right, Sokotoa right cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that means if you want the adjacent, you just take hypotenuse cosine theta to find the adjacent, right, and hypotenuse sine theta to find the, um, to find the y component. Okay, uh, but it's not always, all right, cosine is not always x, sine is not always y. It just depends what angle is given to you in the figure. Let's look at this one. Let's look at this one. All right, this component right here would be 80 cosine 35. I like to think of cosine as the one that's touching Cosine is the angle that is touching the component right here. All right, but the other component, all right, do you want to draw it right here? Um, or you can draw it right here. 
Uh, but either way, the other component would be, be 80 sine 35. 80 sine 35. Let's, let's write that. Uh, my force. Okay, I like to do x first, and so this is going to be 80 sine 35. And you see it's in the negative i. It's pointed to the left. I, I is positive to the right. Um, and then also this one is down 80 cosine 35 in the j. Units are pounds. So this force could be written as negative 45.9 in the i. Negative 45.9 in the I, negative 65.5 in the J, units are pounds, or, and this is the way I like to do it, um, okay, I'll just say, okay, my FX would be negative 45.9, my FY would be negative 65.5, okay, and, uh, I've kind of mentioned this, but we want to break them up into components because then when we get to, to start summing, then we can take the x component of one force plus the x component of another force, and we can just add the x components, right? We can take the y component and add it with the y component of any other force. Um, don't try to add an x component with a y component. Don't try to add a magnitude with another magnitude if they're not in the same direction. Only add them if they're in the same components that are in the same direction. Okay. Uh, then one other thing that's pretty common is instead of them giving us an angle, um, they might give us these dimensions. They might give us these dimensions. Now, I know that a lot of you are probably going to want to take those dimensions and find the angle and then use sine and cosine. That's really uh, doing a lot more work than necessary. Okay. Um, if you know the dimensions, first thing here, if we know the dimensions, I like to write them right here. Uh, if we know it's 8 by 24, go ahead and find the hypotenuse. 8 by 24, let's see, 8 squared, 24 squared, take the square root. Uh, would be 25.3, 25.3. Uh, anytime you know the X and the Y component and you want the magnitude, um, whether we're talking about dimensions or forces, uh, you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So square the two, sum them, take the square root. Uh, all right, so so that's the, that's the dimension length right here. And then let's use ratios. All right, here we go. So let's look at this. X component. What is the X component? We're going to draw it right here or draw it right here. What is this X component? Well, this this pink triangle of forces and their magnitudes is a similar triangle to this blue triangle of these dimensions. Okay, this pink triangle of forces is a similar triangle to these this blue triangle of dimensions. And so if we know this magnitude and we know that magnitude, if we know this component and we want to know this component, then it's really just a um, ratio of them, right? 25.3 to 100 is the same as 8 is to my fx. Rearrange this a little bit. All right, fx is going to be the x dimension over the magnitude of the x dimension times the magnitude right here. All right, so let's look at that. To find the x component, I just take the magnitude 100 and multiply it times 8 over 25.3, whereas if I want to find the y component, I would take the magnitude and multiply it times 24 over 25.3. Does this make sense? All right, so first of all, look at these ratios. Does this make sense that the x component is going to be 8, the y component is going to be 24, uh, so the y component is going to be a lot larger. That makes sense, right? That makes sense that this y component is going to be larger than the um, x component. But also, the main thing here <clears throat> is that this 8 over 25.3, that is sine 
That is sine. So I didn't have to find theta and then try to then plug in sine of theta in my calculator because I already have sine theta 8 over 25.3. I already have cosine theta 24 over 25.3. Okay, so this is negative 94.9. This is negative 31.6 pounds. I put in the negative myself because I, I can see that it is going negative, right? I can see that it's going negative, or, you know, this dimension of 8 was a, to the left dimension of 8. This dimension of 24 is a, a below down dimension of 24. All right, so either keeping them separate, fx is negative 31.6, fy, negative 94.9. If I ask for it is in Cartesian no notation, then this is what I want. Negative 31.6 in the I minus 94.9 in the J. And I need units. I like them outside of everything, just in parentheses right here. Okay, so if we're given uh, dimensions, just take the X dimension over the magnitude and multiply it times the force. Take the Y dimension over the magnitude of the dimensions multiply it times the force, and get your x and y components.